Hello and welcome back to Inspiring Hikes. In this episode, I will be discussing what's in the bag. Now, this was probably going to be a long episode. Some things I may repeat from previous videos, but I'm going to try to go over in full detail everything I can about this backpack, how it's packed, and why it's packed that way. Because when you go to repack this backpack, it's best to do it a certain way. So I will discuss what's in the bag and how to pack it. So first we'll start off with things that are on the, the outside of the backpack. Uh, first we'll start with the GPS tracking device. Uh, this will be only provided to the group leader uh, in my rental packages. So every person does not get a spot GPS tracker, but the group leader will receive a spot GPS tracker. Uh, in one pocket that's easy, easily accessible while hiking, uh, each person will receive a map and trail guide with all the information that you need to know while you're out there. Uh, each person will receive a Sawyer squeeze with a water bottle. Uh, basically you fill this up at any river, creek, stream, spring, or even a cow trough, anywhere you can get water, whether it be a, a mud puddle. Fill up your water bottle, screw on this all your squeeze, and drink the fresh water. Uh, this is not quite a liter of water. Uh, in the back of the backpack, each person will also be provided with two, these are called platypus bags. They just, they, they're flat, but whenever you fill them up with water, it holds 32 ounces. So each rental will include two 32 ounce things of water. Uh, most likely, you won't have to use these. During my through hike, I never carry more than one water bottle at a time. When you come on a, come up on a water source, uh, whether it be a creek or a spring, you get a water bottle, chug one while you're there, and then fill up a second one for the next water source. Uh, on the AT, you typically have water every two to three miles. There's no reason to fill up 64 liters of water and carry that weight when you're going to come up on water within a couple miles. Uh, one thing these are good for, when you arrive to a shelter, a lot of times the water source will be down a side trail. So you'll have to walk maybe half a mile or less to get water. Well, if you're going to get water for dinner and to brush your teeth and to clean out your pot, and then have water in the morning, you'll want to take these two extra bags with you at your campsite to fill with water. And then also this. So in all, you can carry a pretty good amount of water. Uh, the next piece of gear, which is also on the outside of the backpack, is a simple foam cushion. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my cushion while I was on the AT. If the ground's wet or you just want a little bit of comfort and you're taking a break, it's on the outside of your backpack. So you just quickly grab it, throw it on the ground, and it keeps your butt dry while providing a little comfort. All right, so the next piece of gear on the outside of the backpack uh, this bear spray will only be provided to the group leader. Uh, everybody won't receive a can of bear spray. The group leader will. Uh, and it's simply pull this safety, little plastic piece, 
going to squeeze and it's like a huge mist of pepper spray. If there's a bear encountering, you've encountered that seems aggressive or is making its way towards you, don't hesitate to pull this out and just miss the air. Just do a one big stroke. The bear will smell that and quickly leave the scene. Once again, I saw eight bears on my Appalachian Trail through hike, and not a single one of them came at me. They typically run away from me. So the bear spray will be provided to the group leader. Uh, the next item will be rope and a carabiner. This will also only be provided to the group leader. Uh, once you pick out your campsite, uh, your group leader and everybody in the group will find one tree to hang all their food from. So I've got a video showing how to hang a bear bag, throw up a bear bag, and all four people in the group hang their food in the same tree. There's no reason for everybody to hang their food in different trees. Uh, this is a shared item within the group. Uh, the group leader will receive the bear bag right now. Uh, the next item is a poop trowel. Once again, I've told you don't scoop your poop with the trowel because this poop trowel goes in your book bag. You dig a cat hole, you poop in it. If you miss the hole, get a stick, roll your poop into the hole and cover the hole up with your foot. Do not scoop poop with a poop trowel. It goes in your book bag. Uh, the next item on the outside of your book bag that is accessible before you even open it is a rain fly. Uh, this is a backpack cover to help prevent your gear from getting wet. It's got a buckle that attaches to the top of your backpack. And it covers the backpack like this. So now your backpack has what my, re my friend referred to this as a shower cap. Every rental includes, or every backpack includes a shower cap. Uh, keeps your gear dry. Simple as that. Uh, shower cap. Cap on the outside. The next piece of gear on the outside of your backpack will be your poles for your tent. Uh, your poles are kept on either side, but they're rigid. They don't flex. They don't need to be inside. You can't stuff poles, so your poles are stored outside. All right, with no further ado, what's inside the backpack? So these packs have two different lids. This thing here is called the brain. It's got a zipper on the top and a zipper on the inside. Me personally, I never used the brain. I mailed this home and could fit everything inside the backpack. So I didn't need two extra pockets on top. This will be provided. If you need it, you can take it. If you do not need it, you can leave it at home. So, the backpack. It's got two, two tight ends. You loosen them, unclip it, This, you want to pull open, all the way open, it's got a tab, you open it up. The very first thing on top of your backpack is the most important thing in your pack, food. There's also the heaviest thing, and your backpack is light.
lightest on the bottom, heaviest on the top. It sits, sits on your back better that way. When your heavy food is up top, the center of mass is more in the middle of your body, so you like foods on top. Also, if you want to stop on the side of the trail and have a break or lunch, you need access to your food. Your food bag's on top. Next is a trash bag. something you put your trash in here it's on top of the bag next piece of gear is another bag and in case you haven't realized this episode will be called bags in bags because this is your backpack you've got one bag it's got food your next bag is a trash bag this blue bag for my rental customers will be electronics, first aid, and your headlamp. Uh, every rental includes a simple first aid kit. I've got alcohol pads, band-aids, tape, uh, zip ties, just in case any of your straps break and you need to use a zip tie. I've got two zip ties in each bag. I've also included two earbuds uh, if you decide to sleep in the shelter or right beside your friend and they snore. I promise your earbuds will make a difference in a good night's sleep. I've also included a fire starting kit, emergency fire starting kit with waterproof matches, some cotton balls, and a fire starter in case you need an emergency fire. Uh, in this, there's also an emergency blanket, uh, silver basic blanket. Uh, this item here will be in the blue bag for the group leader. It is a simple game, uh, Pass the Pigs. It's a dice game. The group leader will have it. Uh, if you get stuck in your tent during a rainstorm or in a shelter during a rainstorm, it helps to have a little game to play. So that's a basic dice game, pass the pigs. Also in the blue bag will be a headlamp. Uh, every person is provided a headlamp. Very simple, it goes on your head. Uh, these have a locking feature to prevent you from draining the batteries while this headlamp is stuffed in your backpack. So every headlamp will be locked. To unlock it, you have to squeeze the button for four seconds. It's unlocked. And of course, I can't get it to work, so let's try this one more time. Squeeze it for four seconds. I got it to work. So that's the unlock feature. Uh, you can press and hold these and it'll, it will dim the light so it's not as bright. Press and hold, goes all the way up. Press and hold, it dims. Uh, at the end of the night when you're going to pack this up, Press and hold, and it strokes. So that's locked. When you go to push it, it blinks. That means it's locked. You don't want this to drain batteries. Uh, if it 
if it's on all day and you get to camp at night and your battery's dead, then you don't have a flashlight. All right, so that's the blue bag. The blue bag is your first aid. So also be a good place to put your cell phone or any electronics that you are wanting to take with you. Next is the red bag. Red bag is your cook stove. Uh, inside of this is your camp fuel or rubbing alcohol, a spork, a sponge and soap to clean your pot out. Uh, inside of each pot is your pot pan stove. So you are provided one simple pop can stove and about four ounces of fuel to boil your water. You just pour an ounce of rubbing alcohol in here, light it, set the can on top and boil your water. Make sure you're using this on a durable surface. Uh, you'll notice at a lot of the shelters there are burn marks and pit marks from rubbing alcohol stoves. So don't cook in the shelter, don't cook on the picnic tables, put this on the ground and cook on the ground. Uh, another reason you don't wanna cook in these shelters is any crumbs that you drop in the shelter, there will be a mouse coming out in the middle of the night to eat that food. So don't eat or cook in the shelter. And also, once you're done cooking, you put your pot back in the orange bag and put the pot can stove inside the pot. This is extremely durable and can get crushed, or not durable, extremely vulnerable and can get crushed easily. So you want to store it inside of the pot, that way it won't get crushed. Put the lid on it. Red bag, cook stove. One thing you want to make sure to do whenever you're putting these stuff sacks back in the bag is to deflate the air before you roll it up. So that made a small container. If you have all this air inside the bag, you just roll up a bunch of air. And this air doesn't have room in the bag. There's no room for air. So don't have a stuff, a big old puffy bag. When you roll these dry sacks down, push all the air out of them, and then roll it up. All right, so that's another bag inside of the bag. So what else is inside of the bag? Toilet paper hand sanitizer. Uh, this is an item that goes on top. Uh, one time during my through hike, I left town and I made it about four or five miles into the woods and I had to poop. And when you have to poop, you have to poop. And my toilet paper was on the very bottom of my bag. So I had to pull everything out just to get to my toilet paper. So the moral of the story is, your toilet paper goes on top of the bag so it's easily accessible when you have to poop. Next item, rain jacket. Everybody's got a thin, basic rain jacket. Now, if it's raining outside, I do not wear this jacket. My skin is waterproof. My skin dries within minutes. And I prefer to save this for camp. If you keep your rain jacket dry, whenever you get to the camp at night, you can wear your rain jacket and actually use the jacket for its purpose. Uh, if it's gonna rain all day on you, I promise you, your rain jacket will be wet. You'll be sweating underneath the rain jacket and it'll be useless when you get to camp at night because you'll just basically have a wet piece of plastic. 
So like, if it's raining, just hike with your skin. Like, perfect rain jacket. All right, next in your bag is a tent. Lightweight, only two pounds. And your ground cover. This ground cover is extremely important to preserve the tent. Whenever you've got to set, set your tent up, uh, this ground cover goes down first, which you'll see in the video about tents. Uh, it helps prevent holes and sticks and rocks getting uh, into the tent and ripping the actual tent. So this is like a protective barrier. Uh, if for some reason you do not set up your tent because it's raining and you want to stay in the shelter, you will want to unpack this ground cover, lay it on the wooden floor of the shelter, and then put your air mattress on top of this. So this will protect the air mattress. So this is basically a little protection from getting holes in your air mattress here or tent. Tent, ground cover. And obviously your tent, your tent poles were on the outside. All right, next we get to the important stuff. This stuff is kept in a trash compactor bag. Uh, a trash compactor bag is thicker than your typical trash bag. Uh, this will help prevent your sleeping gear from getting wet. No matter what you do, this stuff cannot get wet. You will not have a good evening if you do not have dry sleeping equipment. Inside of this bottom bag at the bottom of your backpack, first is a sleeping mat. You don't want to sleep on a wet mat. Inside of there you'll have your jacket because when you get to camp on a rainy day, you'll want to have a dry jacket. You'll also want, on a rainy day, to have a pair of dry clothes, a pair of pants, a shirt, dry shirt, and shirts, when you're in the woods, you would like to have a synthetic style shirt. If you wear a typical cotton shirt, it will hold moisture for longer and be harder to dry out. A synthetic athletic shirt will dry out a lot quicker than your cotton. They also wring out, so you can wring all the water out. Uh, dry shirt and a dry pair of socks. You've got a pair that you've worn hiking all day. They got wet and sweaty. Nothing's better than a dry pair of socks. And the last item in the bottom of the bag, to come out last, is your sleeping bag. This keeps you warm at night. You do not want a wet sleeping bag. And I told you, this episode includes bags, bags inside of bags inside of bags. The very last bag, and one more item. Your pillow, which every rental during 2020 will include a free pillow. So that's basically all the gear that you need, other than your medication, possibly some goodie powders, ibuprofen, some type of pain medication. Uh, but that's it. And now, after 24 minutes, I will put this all back into the bag in the correct order and explain again why this stuff needs to go in the correct order. So you've got an empty bag. The very first thing that goes back into your empty bag in the morning time when you're packing up your camera is this thick trash compactor bag. You stuff it all the way down to the bottom. The next item that goes in the backpack is your sleeping bag, which if you watched the previous video or the other video, 
you're going to have to stuff this sleeping bag in here. Now, when it goes into the bag, I put it in vertical, and when it gets to the bottom of the bag, I rotate this sleeping bag like this. So it's sitting in the bag like this. But it goes vertical in first. And you have to push it. While pulling the, the plastic bag up. Now I've got the sleeping bag in the bottom and I'm going to turn it sideways. So now it's sitting sideways in the back. Things are in this bag so they do not get wet. Your coat that you would like to keep dry for camp puts in the bottom. And now I stuff this stuff beside the sleeping bag. It goes all the way down. Down in there. Your pillow. You don't want a wet pillow, do you? Nope. It goes stuffed. Your camp sock, dry socks, so they're not stuffed down in it. Your camp clothes, which you have taken off in the morning and put on your wet clothes from the previous day. These are dry clothes you want them in the bag. Stuff them. That stuff is stuffed in the bag. Stuff your clothes. And the last dry piece of gear is your sleeping bag or your sleeping mat. It goes in the bag sideways. You don't want it to be up and down. It goes in like this. Alright, so you got your clothes, your pillow, your sleeping bag, and your sleeping mat. When you're pushing that down in, you pull this back up because it needs to fold over. It goes tucked in one side, folded like a bag of potato chips, and stuffed in the other. So inside your bag, with lots of room, you have your sleeping equipment that should not get wet. stuff in there. Next goes your tent. And it also stuffs in the bag. The ground cloth stuffs beside the tent. Your rain jacket stuffs beside the tent. First aid kit and your headlamp goes up top because you might need your first aid kit. Cooking stove and your toilet paper. All things that you may want to access throughout the day. Then on top of that, on the very top of your bag is your food bag because you're going to want to eat later. And it goes on the top. Then your trash bag. Just stuff your trash bag in there. Cinch this cord in the middle of the bag. And for me, I only used this cover. But hypothetically, if you use the brain, which includes a mesh bag and another pocket up here. Connects, connects, and you tie it down. On the outside of your bag, you put your hiking pole. Your shower cap gets stuffed. Your bear bag rope gets stuffed. Bear spray 
on one side, water bottle and water filter on one side, your poop trap in the back, your two extra water platypus bags stuff on the outside, your mat goes on the opposite side of the water because you will want to pull this out five or six times throughout your hike to check the mileage or what's your closest landmark. So your map wants to be available. And you will clip the spot on the front. So that, my friends, is how and why you pack a backpack the way you do. I hope this was informative and peace out.